time for yet another homebrew episode. Now, fun fact, this is the first episode that I'm filming with my new camera lens, and I am very excited to see how this looks, even though I have no idea how to work it quite yet, and I don't know if the focus is good or not, so we'll find out. Anywho, before we get started, I need to check that my microphone is on. It is on, awesome. All right, so first things first. Today, we're gonna be going over making some color samples. So color samples basically are gonna be little pieces of whatever wood that you most commonly would use in your finishes if you wanna try out what different finishes would look like or if you just wanna have a different variety to choose from. For instance, if you're doing a lot of customer work, you wanna have quick references that you wanna show clients and stuff like that. But overall, because this is homebrew, so this is stuff that you're doing at home, this is more just for you. Uh, to kind of see quickly what colored things you might want to do. So, first things first, the very important thing, choose your material. So, uh, for me, because I know I'm going to be using a lot of curly birch, I chose curly birch that I glued onto some ply, just because it's easier than having strips of veneer. The most important thing is that you sand the wood the same way that you would your finished product because if you don't sand it, it's not gonna look the same. You have to use the exact same finishing technique as if this was the real thing, as if this was the real guitar that you were working on. So, that being said, how I would approach this, I would wet the wood first, and then go ahead and, so I'll show you some wetting. I'll do one of these, how I've prepared some earlier. So, wet the wood, like so. Don't need too much, that just raises the grain so that when you sand it back, you'll be able to get a much, much better finish on it. Now, once you wet the grain, the grain should have raised up somewhat. Now it's time to sand that. So these have already been rough sanded to 240 before wetting, and then put the water on top, and now it's back to 240. And using a block. So back to 240, then you repeat the process as many times as you can until the grain does not raise anymore. Yeah, so now I've sanded it to 240 and it's time to move on to 320. For the sake of this demonstration, there's not really any point in me going back and forth and back and forth because truth be told, I have prepared a bunch of these prior to filming because I want to get the ball moving. As you can see, I also have some paper here that I have already used. Now, once you've done all your sanding, it's time to start getting creative and having a lot of fun with your stains. First off, clear up some space, make sure that there's no dust anywhere. On No dust on your pieces that are going to be staining, no dust on on your table or whatever you're using. Now of course you don't want to start staining on <laughs> any piece of furniture because you'll, well, you'll stain it. So, paper towels are this, making sure that you don't get stain all over yourself, so having some gloves is very important. A pen or a sharpie, well, is a sharpie. This is, for me, to write down what stains I've used on the back if I go multiple layers so I know exactly what I've been doing. Now, I'm gonna start off with something that I've already done. This is the sort of same staining method that I used for Oceana. So, we're going to, in order to get that really deep lagoon blue, as we called it, we started off with some green. base. Now this is the first time I'm trying this particular stain, the spirit stain, spirit based stain. Um, I've always used, yeah please shake well, okay. I've always used water based stains before. So this is fairly new to me still, but you know application is still the same as if it were water based or spirits based. It's just more 
Now, already it looks a lot brighter than water-based stuff, so that's always promising. But hey, I'm gonna leave that be. So start off with green, and then we're gonna sand that back. So I'm gonna put sand, so I know that it's been sanded. It hasn't been sanded yet, but it will get sanded. All right, next up, what should we try? What should we try? Um, I'm just way too curious about pink stain, so I am going to go with a sort of purple for this one, so I need to find a bottle of purple, which is still black. Whoa. I have misplaced my purple. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do I really not have any purple? Well, that sucks. I don't have a purple stain. All right, so this gets to the portion where I start mixing stains. Already at this point. That's a bummer. I would have really liked to have a nice purple, but seeing as I don't have that, let's see, what am I gonna mix? I'll see if I mix some pink with that little blue. If that does anything. Even remotely. Purpley. That's a shame. I would have some water based purple. So that might work, but I don't know. That's a look. This is very blue. Really purple though. It's just turning kind of a dirty, dirty color. There we go. So I guess that little blue and pink. Somewhat purple color. Shame, really. I really like purple. Well, now I'm gonna try and see if I can. It's not really doing what I want it to do. Which is a real shame. Already at this point during the sort of tutorial, but like I said, I've never used these things before, so I don't really know. Right, well, we'll see what that looks like later on. Anywho, moving onwards. Uh, next up, I'm gonna try a very lovely green. So in order to do that lovely green, I'm gonna have a base coat of yellow. That went on so well. That was very minimal effort. So, yellow. Now that's gonna get sanded, so sand. Uh, what do we try next? I want to try a sort of red. My original plan was to have purple as the base because I don't like using black as the base for red. But seeing as I don't have any purple, I'm left with very little choice. Maybe if I start with some cherry red and put a brighter red on top of that. Maybe then I'll get something closer to what I want. Gonna try a really nice blue. First off, I'm gonna start with royal blue on the base. <clears throat> and yeah, with spirit stains, I must say that you should wear a mask when using them. I'm not wearing a mask because I'm doing this video and you actually need to hear hear me talk. Again, not overly happy with how this stain is going on. I hope it's not the bottle that's leaking. That's also not very good. This is the only one that came like this as well and turned this whole process into a lot messier of a process. 
I don't know what it is with this royal blue stain, but the pigment <laughs> isn't really sinking in all that well and has caused a big mess. Which is not nice, especially because it's spirit based. So now I have a big blue splotch on my kitchen table. Wonderful. We'll talk about disposing rags in a bit, but I mean, look at that. That's not, that's not exactly blue. Royal sand. I want to try a sort of vintagey brown. So in order to do that, I am going to use amber as a base. And then I'm going to put brown on top of that. I'm going to try the purple again. But I'm going to put pink on the base and then put water-based purple over on top of that. Now already this looks fairly similar to the yellow, it's just a bit darker. So we'll see how it turns out. Because I was disappointed in the other purple, I'm going to do that one again. So pink base and then put water-based purple over on top of it. Sand. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'm not a real big fan of black colored instruments. I think they're a bit dull. So I'll see what I can do to kind of brighten this one up. Make it a little bit more interesting. Everybody has a black guitar, so why not do something that's black, but throw a little twist in. Now in general, whenever I do black, or whenever I do any sort of stain, I always do one layer and I always sand and then put another layer on. Black, sand. Alright, still got plenty more to do, plenty more colors. Yellow is going to be green. Um, I have to write down what I have planned. So that's going to be phthalo blue over on top. It's going to have purple, water based. This is going to have the bright red. It's going to have green. This is going to have royal blue, which I didn't like the look of. This is just going to be this. All right. Uh, what haven't I tried yet? I haven't made an orange, so let's try an orange. Um, a base of the bright red. Red. Sand. Orange. Uh, and yellow. Hopefully this should give me a very bright orangey color. The red should just bring out all the figuring in the wood. The orange should be the main color, and then the yellow just to bring emphasis. Let me see if I can do a sort of little burst for it. There's a huge difference in two different kinds of reds. I mean, compare and contrast those two. There's more brown than anything else. That's like properly red. So yeah, that's cool. Should we do... Now this is where I can start having fun. Uh, pick out some random colors, see what I come up with. Don't know what denim blue looks like, so let's have a look. Usually don't really like the color of denim blue, but uh, we'll see. Maybe this is a bit better. No, that's fairly similar to the royal blue. Except it's brighter, which... This looks more denim than this. It's weird. Uh, let's mix in some, 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 some yellow. That's a very interesting color. Don't exactly know what to think of it. That's really interesting. So I'll see what that looks like when it clears up. That's denim and yellow. No sanding in between. I'm curious about that. Um, now seeing as we did the blue with the green, 
face. Let's try green first, then sand, and then let's go fallow. Nope, yep, royal. No, I did it the wrong way. I was supposed to put blue first. So blue first, the pain in the ass. Royal blue that kept on spilling all over the place and ruining everything. Let's put that first. The pigment isn't... It's like, whatever I do, the spirit soaks in, but the pigment doesn't. It just kind of floats off into nothing. Which is a little bit of... Like, the pigment sits on top of the wood. It doesn't actually sink in. It's really strange. It leaves it very splotchy. But, I'll let it be like that for now. Other way around. There we go. Now, I have four more pieces that I'm going to leave aside for experimentation later on. Now the fumes are killing me for now, so I'm going to turn the camera off and be back later. Now, one thing that I'm going to already say at this point, when you're throwing away all your towels, if you've been working with spirit based stains, you have to run them underwater so that they're wet and then throw them in the trash. Preferably, what I usually do is I wet them and then I pull my glove over on top of them and then I throw them in the trash. What you should do is put them in a bin that is meant for waste like this. So a metal bin with water in it so that they always remain wet because they might catch fire by themselves. I can already feel a little bit of heat or that just be, might be in my hand, I don't know. The really nice thing about using spirit based stain is the fact that they off gas. Instead of with water base, they soak into the wood so they have to dry for a much longer period of time. But because all of the spirits um, kind of evaporate, you can already sand these much quicker than you would with working with wind, than you would if you're working with water based. So, so again, I've cut out a piece of 320 for myself. The point is that you don't sand away all the material because that kind of defeats the whole purpose. But leave it in the grain of the wood. Alrighty, so uh, continuing onwards. Maybe I'm just not used to them, but I'm not fully satisfied with how these stains sand. I waited a very long time. I, wait, I even stopped the camera and I waited an extra time between the, me starting the sand and finishing them, but I don't know whether it's just some materials it just doesn't work all that well with, or if this is what it is like. But I just need to keep on experimenting and see what's what, really. Um, but yeah, moving onwards. So. This is the one that has blue base and we'll get green on top. So let's see what that's gonna look like. That's actually a pretty interesting color. Now this is the method that I used, or this is the colors that I used for the Icarus prototype. So we'll see how that turns out in the long run. Now there was another one that was getting green. It's this one. So we're gonna put green on that, and make sure that I don't have any blue in this. Other side of the paper for it. So this should give me that vibrant green, this is the yellow. So I'm hoping, yeah, see? But again, the color's just, pigment's not really sticking the way I want it to. I guess I just need to keep on applying more and more. But uh, yeah, that's not a bad, looking green. Could be better, but I'm pretty sure that's the material choice and not being familiar with the stains as of yet. But let's see what else do we have. And that's gonna be the one that had the amber on first. And I'm feeling that if I would have put a little bit of yellow, it would look a little bit better. This might look a little too brown. Yeah, pretty much. 
But hey, if brown is something you like, I mean, it that was a very even coat. Went on there very nicely, but uh, yeah, it's a bit dull. Put some yellow on top of that, see if it does anything. Hey, and that brightened it up a good bit. Brown plus yellow. So this is the cherry red, and we're gonna put the bright red on top of that. Not a bad looking red at all. I would want a little bit more depth out of it, so we'll see how it cures, but to me that looks just a little bit bland. So I don't wanna use black, because everybody uses black as a base, so I wanna think of what I can do with that. The black turned out like crap, so I'm gonna actually put red on top of that. Yeah, the black didn't really sand all that well at all. So there. Red on top. It's very interesting. I want to put a little bit of orange. So black, sand, red, plus orange. There we go. That's a really nice blue. So that's royal blue base, sand it back with phthalo blue on top. Green, sand it down, royal blue on top. And this is the same combination that we used for Oceana. So we'll see how that turns out, it dries up. Next up is red. That's the bright red that got sanded down. I'm gonna get orange and yellow on top. Now all by itself, it's not that bad either. But not exactly where I was going for. I do like orange though. It's not too bad. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow. Let's see if I can brighten that up a bit. There we go much deeper orange immediately straight off the bat so that's nice all right now try out the water-based purple now this purple out of the bottle already i kind of like the color of. so if i can actually make it a bit brighter by putting pink that would be pretty sweet seriously it's like, it's like a whole new world trying to use or using uh water-based instead of spirit-based. But that's all the ones I'm doing for now. Done. Let's have a look at the results. All right, so this is the sort of colors that we came up with this time around. Uh, I'm still gonna experiment some because there's a couple of them that I, I'm not fully content with. I really like the orange. The orange turned out great. The blue turned out nice, so... <laughs> All in all, there's only like one or two that actually turned out all right. Uh, I'm gonna put that down to me not being really used to the stains yet, but this is why you do experiments. Instead of going ahead and staining an entire guitar and realizing that it doesn't work, you can try something like this out for yourself. Now, the next step here would be to go ahead and apply the finish that you're gonna use, whether it be an oil, or whether you'd be using a clear coat, lacquer, or anything like that. Uh, that would be your next step to actually really get these to the state that you would want to present them to a client. <clears throat> All right, well, that was an experiment to say the least. At least now you have some little color samples that you can show customers or have a look at yourself and yeah just experiment this is a great way to try out different sort of ideas if you have a new finish that you're unfamiliar with this is probably the best way for you to go through and uh, have a look at exactly how they work figure out how to best utilize them this was definitely a learning experience for me already toward the end of it i started learning how the spirit stains work and so on um, one thing's for certain though that the spirit stains they do look a lot brighter because um, if you compare that to the water base this already looks a bit dull 
Uh, apply finish to that, it'll look great. But by itself, it looks mm. So I'm thinking that if I were to apply some lacquer onto these, they would look fantastic. But I'll have a look at what I do with this set. I'll make some new ones and go from there. But yeah, that was it for now. And I'll see you again for our next homebrew episode. Bye.